98 FM 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy Weekdays from 10am on 98 FM Now earlier on you may have heard on our news our lead story today is all about the occupation of a uh, house in the city centre. A house where scores of tenants were found to be living in incredibly cramped conditions has been occupied by housing groups. Um, Some 150 demonstrators marched from Dublin city centre to Summerhill Place last night where they occupied uh, the, the, the property. Participants in the protest, including the Dublin Central Housing Action Group, said they wanted to raise awareness of the housing situation in Ireland. Is this Apollo House the second? I have to find out a little bit more. Uh, 98 FM's Jamie Moore has made his way uh, down to this uh, house at Summerhill Place. Uh, Jamie, welcome to the show. Hey Adrian, how are you? Jamie, what can you tell me about what these people are doing? Well, I can see a red banner above the house that says Homes for All. There's also some handwritten placards on uh, the railings outside the house that include slum landlords out and housing is a right. The house has a yellow door. There are some protesters outside and, and some inside as well. And I'm joined by uh, two of the people now who've just come uh, outside from inside the house. What's your name? Uh, Connor's my name. And what's your name? Oshin's my name. So Connor, we just heard about the march last night. Bring us the story from there as to how you guys gave entry to this property last night and why? Yeah, so the march was a real high point last night and we are all we we're all very pumped up. Uh, it was a real show of strength. We all took the road down from the GPO to here. So we were raring to go and we got here. Like We've been keeping an eye on the property for a number of months now and like the door was open. So we, we, we knew it had been vacant and at that stage we thought we had the energy to go in and we went in, uh, a, a number of us, maybe 20 or so at the start and then more after that went into the house. Um, and uh, secured the place at, for, for, for a start and that's when the work kind of started and we started dividing, dividing labour inside and start getting the word out, getting a public rally outside, getting more people down. That's what happens. So obviously we're outside currently, you're not allowing me in which is fair enough so bring us inside on the radio switch and tell me what it's like in there, how many people are there, why they're there and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so we have a kind of really broad representation of people inside. We have people from grassroots housing activist groups. We have people that run soup kitchens. And uh, we have people from various political parties, trade unions, NGOs. Uh, like, it's a really, it's a broader representation. And, and, effect, and people affected directly by the crisis as well, of course. So, like, it, 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 the representation is as broad as the, the number of people that are affected by the crisis. Um, inside... We've divided up the work into kind of uh, three main teams. You have people speaking to the media, people like yourself. You have people that are speaking to the local community. And it's been great, actually, the support that we've gotten from the local community so far and the various community groups around here. They see this building empty and they see uh, their families and friends affected by the housing crisis, see people homeless and living in hubs and whatever. And they're asking questions. Why are these, em- why are these properties empty? When the council could bring them into public ownership through compulsory purchase orders, why aren't they doing that? The public demand for it, it could be easily done. It wouldn't take much money and it would ease so much so much pain, suffering and uh, the, the, the brunt of this crisis. So that, the, these are the questions we're asking. We're bringing public support around us now. now Jamie, uh, Jamie can, that, sorry, Adrian, yeah. can you ask, is it their intention to make this protest? And I understand that they, they've they talked about perhaps occupying a number of buildings um, nearby. Is it their intention to attempt to turn this into Apollo House the second? Well, Shane, is it your plan to turn this into a new Apollo house or such? And if so, how do you plan to do that? How long do you plan to stay here? And I know the guards were here last night as well, and you guys are obviously aware that, that what you're is illegal, even though you feel that it's the right thing for you guys to do. Well, we wouldn't say that we're planning on turning this into a, a new Apollo house. This is a separate action that's being run by grassroots community organisations. The goal of this is to give this property back to the community as it should be done, Uh, And really, it's going to be a question of what the community wants the property to be used for. Uh, It's not about us saying what we're going to do with it. It's about people coming together and saying, you know, we're in the middle of a housing crisis. They know what the answer is, um, and that's that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a question of outreach and community building. So if that doesn't work, what's plan B as such? Because the people in this house are are clearly, you know, willing to stay here if if you don't get what you want and, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean... Plan B and Plan A and Plan C is, is continued action, continued mobilization, continued organization. We've had a huge upswell of, of support, both from the local community and indeed broader from, from various groups. As, as you see, with cars going by, uh, 
people are behind us, and this is this is a national crisis. You have almost 10,000 people homeless. You have over 3,000 children homeless in this country. It's a disgrace that the government hasn't taken action, and we will continue to fight until appropriate action is taken to resolve this emergency. Yeah, Adrian, we're getting some beeps up some cards and some mm. taxis. So, well. so I can hear. Starting to grow as well. I just have one more question for you, Connor, before we hand back to Adrian. Just, just in terms of the people in the house, and we mentioned that 10,000 people homeless, but the 3,000 kids as well. Can you tell me some of the stories of the, of the people in there? I know you're a student, you're not homeless, luckily for you, but there are people in there who actually are homeless, who at the moment, the roof over their heads on number 35 Summerhill Place is their home, and it's just starting to rain, for example. We've had some fantastic weather in the last couple of months, but things will get cold again. It's a minute the roof over these people's heads. Just tell me about some of them. Yeah, well, absolutely. It is a roof over their heads at the moment, but at the same time, like, we're not trying to be another Apollo house. Like, this isn't the hostel. It's a political action, and, like, we're calling for more permanent solutions here. Like, like people inside, all of, like, they have, understandably, crushing stories, as so many people do. Uh, people with very complex, so, so, like, problems in their own lives and stuff. And, uh, like, I can't really give you a, a definitive story. Like, everybody has their own, and, like, they're, they're, they're complex um, so yeah, there, I think everybody's committed to this as a political action. It's not about like putting a roof over their head, such or taking a risk because they want, they're demanding uh, that housing becomes a right, and housing is a right. We need to insist on that. Um, and I guess we're, we're we're calling for public accommodate, public housing, and uh, security of tenure. Uh, we want slum laws, and we want uh, compulsory purchase orders. But as uh, well uh, Jamie, I have, I have just one more question to ask him. Yep. Um, it, realistically. Is a protest like this going to do any of that, realistically? Well, Shane, Adrian is asking if you feel that a protest like this, in real terms, will achieve any of the aims that you've spoken about. Absolutely, because I think this protest is a spark to light a broader mobilisation. It's not just a question about this protest in and of itself. It's a question about bringing people together and showing that actually you can take action. Because one individual property isn't the end solution to this crisis. It's going to require taking huge amounts of properties back into public ownership, back into the control of their communities. But this is that first step, and it acts as a beacon that can bring people together. We've already brought together numerous groups who were involved in this action, even more groups who were involved in the protest yesterday. Those groups and grassroots mobilization is going to be what brings this crisis to an end by forcing the government, by forcing local councils to actually take action. Adrian, just finally, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the Taoiseach Leo Varadkar is here times 30 or it's a Halloween party gone wrong because yeah, there's no, a, a man yeah. uh, dressed in a, in a Leo Varadkar mask looking at me out the window. The two boys here who I'm speaking to are the same. And I just wanted to ask you finally, Connor, on that and, you know, the, the sign, a couple of the signs on, on, the, on the, the lamppost here, you know, we're talking about Leo Varadkar, the Taoiseach. What do you want to say to him if he's in or, or his office? Because you seem to be aiming the blame at this at his door, because he's, of course, in charge of the government who are in charge of trying to help solve this homeless crisis. Stop the excuses. Take your hands out from under your arse. Take action. Build public housing. Uh, uh, put, bring in serious rent caps. Uh, compulsory purchase order. All these properties. Put the builders to work. Uh, stop making excuses for, for your inactions. Uh, stop stop prioritising landlords like the landlord that owns this place. Uh, don't let them away with it anymore. Don't let them away with the rent increases. Don't let the slum la- landlords away with uh packing people into rooms eight and ten at a time with mould grown on the wall and uh, and these awful conditions, fire traps as well. Uh, like it's just excuse after excuse and we, we won't have it anymore. Um, so we're pro- we want we want action. We have no more excuses. Jamie, so I just want, I, I, I just want you to stay there for one second. I don't yeah. know what's his name. His name is Connor, is it? His name is Connor, yeah. Connor, um, I don't know if Connor's able to hear uh, this call because I want to just take this call. Um, I, can put him, I, I can put the headphones on Connor if you want. Yeah, just for a second. Yeah, please, if you would. Connor! Hi, Adrian. Oh, there you are. How are you? Sorry, the lady wants to just um, pass a comment to you. Liz, um, welcome to 98 FM. Hi. Liz, you're a bit annoyed about Hi, this. Why? It, it makes me so angry. They're basically squatters. What they're doing is illegal, and I love how his point keeps being... We're sick of excuses off the government. Well, people like me are sick of excuses off people like them. Why are, We're like, not you making know, excuses. Hold on a minute. Either. You keep going on about this homeless crisis. 
There's not a homeless crisis in this country. There's a housing crisis. No, and there the are 10,000 di- people homeless. There's 3,000 children 10, living, people home. living in I hotels, got, living in I'm, homes. And yeah, exactly. They are living, yeah. exactly. They are living in hotels. No, they are living are in homes. Here, our friends, our relatives and our neighbours that suffer every day in, on the streets and hotels and homes. But the like, thing is, they're okay, still living somewhere. Are when you are living somewhere, here? you are Sorry. not homeless. You are not homeless if you have a roof over your head. Now, I know a hotel room so is no place to rear a family. And I know homes. a hub is no place to rear a family. But there is no children sleeping rough on the streets in Dublin. And I'm in Dublin every day of the week. I'm telling you now, there is no children sleeping rough. And it makes me so angry when they keep saying there's, there's so children many children homeless. Hotels up and down the and who's and fault is that? It's not all down ho- to the government. What are their parents doing to get them a house? What are their parents doing look, to get them at home? Well, in, in, fair, in fairness, really Liz, Liz, in, the children in this crisis and how children are affected. And in it's fairness, Liz, every single um, is, it's it's disgraceful. Every single situation is different. Not everybody no, has I, somebody to fall back on in terms of I family or friends that. or whatever. I'm not saying that everybody does. Is. But what annoys me about the situation is how they keep saying there's so many children homeless. As I said, there I'm are, in the city centre every day of the week. There's no children sleeping rough. And no matter how many empty, please. no matter how many empty buildings or anything yourself. you occupy, no, I would don't like, have children myself. You, but that's it irregardless. Would you take the your fact, children to a hub? Would you like if to it meant, if it meant they weren't sleeping on the streets? Yes, I would. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't be stuck in any kind of hub or hotel room for 12 months, 18 months, two years, because so I do something when, to get myself out of that situation. When the average this is bullshit. Dublin, when the average rent in bullshit. Yeah, and Dublin it's is sorry, not the only county in Ireland. Totally okay, hang on. Uh, 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 hang on, Liz, Liz, relax there for a second. The fact of the matter is that Dublin has become ridiculous for trying to rent, and I know what you're saying. And I fully you can, understand you can that. Can I move can't down rent the country. a place on myself. Okay, I uh, still live at home with my parents because of the fact that I can't move out. And I know and you lucky? In the same Aren't you yeah, lucky? Exactly. This? I'm very lucky that I can fall back and I can still live with my parents. But at the end of the day, all these people that are living in hotel rooms or that are living in hubs are not all off the streets. I guarantee you they all had private rent you look at the They all had apartments of private landlords and then Adam, couldn't afford the rent. And Adam, that, as Adam hard as that is, at the end of the day... OK, hang on, hang on. I, can't I can't hear both of you. OK, I can't hear both of you. Connor, let me ask you this. Um, and it's something I know Jamie has asked you uh, already. This uh, protest is designed for what purpose? Okay, you had a march last night, 150 people there. Uh, there are 10 people staying in the building. What uh, do you honestly expect? And if you consider how I know you say this isn't another Apollo house, but considering what happened at Apollo house, we still have a housing crisis. Are you not just wasting all those people's time? No, no, we're not, Adrian. Like already we've been speaking to uh, elected councillors who, who, who think this movement has a real potential and who think real potential for what, Connor? that they can get the council behind compulsory purchase orders to take over this property for a start and other properties and vacant land just like it uh, after that and to put that to immediate social use. So that's, that's coming from elected councillors. So these are the people who can ultimately vote and take motions to, 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 to put these types of plans into effect. So like we, we, we are looking at very real possibilities here. And like the, the support that we've gotten, I don't think Liz is at all representative of the, the general response we've gotten from the public here some of the beeps just from cars passing well, okay. by. And, 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 and I do think it's great. And anybody well. anybody who's driving past who's listening to this now, um, you know, feel free to, to beep away. You're you're at Summerhill Place, um, yeah. which is in the north inner city. And, I mean, sorry, go on, yeah. Adrian, we actually have we actually have someone here who's affected by the crisis that has children and has lived in a hub that might like to say a couple of okay, words. Okay, but if you... To do, uh, do me a favour and hang on for a second because I have to take a very quick commercial break but I'll come straight back to you after that. And uh, Tommy, I'm going to talk to you after the break as well but you're fuming with what Liz was saying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that one's a head case. Okay, stay there for a second, Tommy. Uh, and Connor, I'll come back to you straight after the break. Live from Dublin City and live from a an occupation of uh, a house at Summerhill Place. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I want to just go back to um, Jamie, who is down at Summerhill Place. J- Jamie, I know you have somebody there to talk to you. Yes, I do indeed, Adrian. What's your name? I'm Carol. Hiya, Carol. So, 
Carol's here with her young daughter. Carol, just tell me your story and why you're here and your background because we did want to speak to someone who has actually been homeless and who is currently homeless and unfortunately that's you. Uh, so basically in 2015 I had to leave my parents' home due to an argument and there was I looked for somewhere to rent, couldn't find anywhere. So we had to present as homeless and couldn't find anywhere so we were told to go to Park Aid Street. Um, we were given emergency accommodation and the emergency accommodation was uh, closed down by DCC and we occupied the building and I was given a HAP home. Uh, well, I was offered a HAP home, should I say. And I want to just also say I do walk before anyone starts saying, oh, look, somebody here just jumping on HAP and jumping on the homeless thing before anyone starts trying to bad mouth me or anything. So basically I took the HAP home. It was near my daughter's school. Um, we're happier given that you're supposed to get an environmental health inspection within six months. 18 months took the DCC to send out a, a HAP in, or an environmental health inspector. They found 42 issues wrong with the house, three of them being mould, damp and ventilation. Yeah, because I just wanted to ask you if you can bring me inside emergency accommodation for oh, you and your young daughter, exactly what that's like. Well, the first time around there was rules. We had curfews. If you wanted to have a night out, um, you had to ask permission. And also, I just want to state the fact that my daughter knows she can go live with her father and his family. My daughter also knows that if she goes to live with her father, that she knows the system. So she knows this time around, if she goes to live with her father, she, she, as she just say in her own words, Matt, you never see children sleeping on the street. So what will happen to you if I, don't, if I don't stay with you? That they were her own words. Sadly, that's because she's been through the system twice. So basically, as I was saying, they found 42 issues with the house. Sadly, the landlord decided to sell up, which meant, again, I was searching for other rental properties. Uh, so we had to present again as homeless. And it's no, no, no parent wants to bring their child through a homeless system. Nobody. And if people think that's what they want to do, they're completely wrong. No parent wants to do that. Because especially, no parent wants to do it once, let alone twice. So again, I look for rental properties. Um, I can't go back to my parents. My parents have a two-bedroom house. My dad's not well. Um, he's limit, limited mobility because of a stroke. Um, it means there's just, just there's reasons I can't so go back home. Number of issues for you. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and just in terms of your of your own daughter here, how old is she? She's seven. Okay, she's seven, Adrian, and she's here in her fifth uh, boat, and she's been <laughs> asking the cars to beep, and she's been holding a couple of the she's the black very, signs very as involved, well. She's very involved in the housing. Just, I, I'm 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 actually appalled to think that you know, you effectively, she's effectively homeless with you because she knows as a seven-year-old that if she goes back to her dad, you may end up on the streets. But the fact that you have a child, it gives you more of a more of an option to try and get somewhere to stay. Is well, that her, her, yeah, and she also said, her t thing to me was, Nanny, I was homeless for the first day of school, my first day of big school, and am I going to be homeless for my first day of communion? Now, as a parent hearing those words, they're going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Do you think I want to be in this situation? Do they, like, I, I, if I could afford rent on my wages, I'd gladly, do, I'd gladly take anywhere, but there is literally nowhere. I have to take HAP. That's the only situation I have. That's the only option I have. And I know from uh, just earlier on, one of your colleagues here, Connor, was speaking to a lady called Liz who rang the station. I know you didn't hear Liz, Liz's call, but she was basically calling you guys squatters. What would you say to someone who has that opinion? Because she's not the only one. There's lots of support for you, but there may be some people who, who, who don't think you should be doing what you're doing. Well, I'm not in the house. But I'm here supporting because these guys are here highlighting the fact of the homeless crisis. And that's what people really need to see, what, what it is. Oh, Morphy and Leo Varadkar aren't admitting to the crisis. There is a crisis. Nobody wants their child in a hotel. Nobody wants their child in a B&B. Nobody wants their child in a hub. Hubs, hotels and B&Bs are not homes. And anyone who thinks a mother or a father wants their children in these places are crazy. Because I, don't, I certainly didn't want my child in, a, in the first place, and I certainly didn't want her in, going in, into the system a second time. And if people, people are going to judge me, and I know people are going to jump on and go, oh, she's this and she's that and whatever. My daughter knows she can go and live with her father. I've encouraged my daughter to go live with her father. But she, sadly, my daughter knows the system, and she knows mm. if she goes, because she has said to me, Mammy, you never see rough sleepers with children. She goes, you'll end up on the street. Will she speak to me for a sec? Um, no, I'd rather not. Okay. No, no, I'd rather I just wanted to ask her if she had a message for you know, anyone listening or for Leo Bradford to help. Do you, you want to speak on the radio about what's happening to try and help your man? Hey, Owen Murphy, I hate you. Oh, my God. Hey, Owen Murphy, I hate you, Adrian said, the seven-year-old. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, Owen, are you listening? Right. Hope um, he is.
Uh, Jamie, what is the... Uh, tell her thanks very much indeed for talking to us. What, what is Thank the you. building itself Hello. like? What sort of conditions are there in there? Yeah, well, I'm afraid I can't get in. I've asked a couple of times and I'm told that they actually have a security team inside and they've just been to have, seem to have like a, a knock that they're, they're like a coded knock to get in and there's a couple of locks on the doors. Obviously, since they managed to get in, they've added a box and stuff. So all the curtains are closed on the downstairs level and the upstairs level, the curtains are also closed. So I can't actually get in. But what I have been told is that they split uh, the house into different areas for different type of, you know, different types of families and people to have some sort of privacy. And I believe there are some outreach volunteers in there as well whether that might be to do with addiction or, or, or other things as well. And also, I think there's a counsellor in there because a lot of these people who are homeless are, are clearly, you know, not in a very good place mentally, as you just heard there from Carol about, you know, she's very worried that if she loses her child or her child goes back to her dad, that she'll end up sleeping on the streets. And every day, Adrian, we come to work in Stevens Green in the middle of town and we see people sleeping rough in sleeping bags in doorways every single day. And as I said, in the summertime, it's at least warm. But in the winter time, do you remember the snow we had and the rain that's going to come again for mm, the winter? Absolutely. What a horrible place to think to, to try and live. So these people are trying their very best. And the majority of cars driving by, I'd say every second or third car is, is giving their horn in support. And as the lad said, the guards were here last night. They were worried that the place may be raided uh, last night. It wasn't. So at the minute, there's no security or police presence at all. But you would think the landlord who owns this property will want these people out. Mm. So we'll have to watch this space and see what happens over the next couple of days for sure. All right, 98 FM, Jamie Moore. Thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us live from um, Summerhill in Dublin's north inner city, where that protest uh, continues. And I was interested to read, actually, um, we've been trying to track this man down, but uh, to no avail, but... Um, Aaron Downey, a guy from the Blanchestown Housing Action Committee, uh, was quoted in uh, today's Herald as having said, illegal occupations such as this are the only way for change to happen. This could be the spark that could inspire something bigger, he said. We advocate that people should take public ownership of buildings that have been left vacant for a long period of time. I think that's the only way we'll get change. And as I said, we have attempted to track him down. If you're listening, Alan or Aaron, I would love to talk to you. Um, but he is advocating that people should take public ownership of buildings that have been left vacant for a long period of time. He says, I think this is the only way we'll get uh, change. Sorry, uh, lads, my that call has gone offline one, if you can try and get him back there. Um, so yeah, this could be an interesting uh, protest. They say it's not Apollo House uh, Part 2. They say uh, we are occupying because enough is enough. Rent hikes, evictions, poor housing conditions, people stuck in overcrowded homes, living in bunk beds or packed into their relatives' homes, people couch surfing, sleeping rough, living in hostels. We hear about these horrendous situations every day now. Uh, we all know somebody who is affected and yet those in power sit on their hands. There's no political will to make real and meaningful uh, change. Now, I know uh, Owen Murphy would completely disagree with that. He would argue that uh, they are making uh, many efforts to change. Liz, when I read out that list of the problems and the reasons they're holding the, this protest, I mean, we, you have to accept that we do have a problem oh, I here. I don't deny that there's a problem with housing. My problem is with them keep saying that it's a home crisis. It's not, because even if they manage to get the government to turn around and say, yeah, compulsory orders for these buildings, and they set them up, all they want housed are the people who are in hotel rooms or hubs or any. And I understand that them places aren't the place to rear children. I know it's not healthy for them. But at the same time, we're still going to have an actual homeless crisis because rough sleepers will always sleep rough. There's always going to be a percentage of people who, for whatever reason, prefer to sleep in a doorway. And when all, like, if they manage to get all these buildings that they want to occupy, get people out of hotels and into them, that's fair enough. But I guarantee you, all these voices shouting about a homeless crisis don't give a shit about the rough sleepers. They don't care about the fella in the doorway. Do you know what I mean? And that's what annoys me because they keep saying about how many children and all are homeless. As I said, I've never, I don't see homeless children in the street. No, no and, and, and I mean you heard and that even, woman. Exactly, you heard that woman with her child. child yes, said yeah. That I don't. So there's no point keep saying all these children are homeless because they're not. And even though a hotel room might not be a home, it is a roof over our head. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what annoys me about it. It's a real. They're doing all this to get people out of hotels, but there's an awful lot of people in hotel rooms or in hubs that are there by choice. 
All right. Um, uh, let me just. Re- thanks very much for your call, Liz. I, I appreciate it. Liz is dead right, says this message. I was walking around Dublin the weekend, and 99% of the homeless people are homeless because of a self inflicted issue. Uh, I think we should help them, but not give them uh, all homes. They need to help themselves also. But they want it all for nothing. Why are we all working hard and doing the right thing if we can get it all for nothing? Um, and that's from uh, Shane. This is a podcast of 98FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. 98FM.